process begins to adapt and begins to kind of basically feel a little bit more comfortable. By 1904, he settled in, uh, in Paris. Okay, so finally decides that because until then, from 1900 to 1904, he was going back and forth. He would go to Paris for a while, didn't work, he would go back to Barcelona, mostly to stay with his parents, okay? And then give it another shot and so on and so forth. He went back and, uh, back and forth. Like I said, the Blue Period paintings, most of the paintings were done in Barcelona back then. Uh, really depressed about the failure of his trip to Paris. But by 1904, he begins to get, you know, a little bit more comfortable. However, even here, two of his best friends, one is Apollinaire, actually the, the real name is Kostrovetsky, okay, uh, a Polish uh, descent, a foreigner, and then Andres Almon, probably of Jewish origin. Again, so Picasso seems to be going back to these, uh, his contacts, even if they're French, okay, they're still kind of outsiders. Okay. So again, it's Picasso's um, idea of relating, but at the same time, um, not relating. These are some of the most important paintings that he does in 1904 and 1905. Okay. This is a family of Southern Bankers. This painting is in Washington, D.C. at the National Gallery. It's a very important painting. This is his best, his big hit at the time. When he sold, he sold for a tremendous amount of money. Uh, and we're lucky that we have it in the United States. But he represents himself, so you can see here, the face looks a little bit like the young Picasso, and uh, here too. And he, dress, he dresses himself as a harlequin, okay? Uh, does anybody know about the harlequin? The harlequin is somebody that is it's kind of a circus uh, a persona, but it's the Commedia dell'arte in, in Italy. So it's like a theater, circus uh, sort of thing. And it's a person that, the reason why they have the, this outfit it's an in-between individual. It's, a, it's actually the original uh, idea is um, Arlequino is somebody that is between life and death. And it's an intermediary between the two worlds. Okay? So Picasso identifies with Harlequin. He, he, he's going to portray himself throughout his life as a Harlequin. So he's a person that is here and there at the same time. He's in life and he's in death. He's in a foreign country and he's back home. So this idea of typical of the immigrant, of being in two worlds at the same time, belonging but at the same time not belonging. This is a very important idea in Picasso. And he does that through the representation of the heart okay, that we see that we see there. Okay? Now in 1906 something major happened. So Picasso now feels very comfortable in Paris, right? Like I said, um, he's you know, now being accepted, he sold a major painting, so now he's making a little bit of money. However, in 1906, he discovers Iberian art, okay? In, interestingly enough, he discovers that in the Louvre, in Paris, okay? There was a major exhibition of Iberian art, and all of a sudden he said, hey, this is incredible, this is incredible art. He was fascinated by it, okay? And you can see how it influenced his art. So this is an Iberian, Sculpture from 100 to 76 BC, and you see Picasso's self-portrait there. So you can see that he's very much related to that. So it, it was interesting to him to be abroad, to be in a foreign country, and all of a sudden to find home in a foreign country. So again, this idea that he seems to to to, to pursue him throughout his life, right? Uh, being in a foreign country, but at the same time being home. So in 1906, what he does is he goes to he goes back home. He goes to this beautiful town close to the Pyrenees, close to the border of France. Uh, it's called Gozo, and he lives very much secluded. Okay, so he wanted to find himself. Okay, and every time Picasso wanted to find himself truly, he went back home. Okay, until much later on, that then just basically stays in France for different, for different reasons, as we're going to see the civil war in Spain, uh, the World War Two later on, and so on and so forth. And this is a major. Um, friend of the time, again, Gertrude Stein, and he portrayed her there, and guess what? She is Jewish, okay? So again, one of his best friends is also an outsider. She was an American living in Paris, and, and a Jew, okay? So again, we see how Picasso relates to people that are outsiders, just like he is himself. So was he fully integrated? Um, we would say no, right? He had a very heavy accent throughout his life, by the way, too. Okay. 
So then in 1907, 1907, 1908, there was another major discovery that was a revolution for him, African art. Because it related to Africa, remember that Spain is very close to Africa. Okay? So the idea is that a lot of our roots did come from Africa. Okay? One of the notions is that the Iberians actually came from Northern Africa into the peninsula. So all of a sudden he, he feels like, hey, again, I'm here. Um, and he, he found this, not at the Louvre in this case, but at uh, this um, Trocadero, which is the ethnographic museum in, uh, in Paris. So he found the, the roots, his roots, his even deeper roots, African roots, in, in Paris. So this was a major revolution in his art also. And he would do um, things like this. Okay? This again is a very important painting. It's actually considered to be one of his most important paintings, 1907. This one is also in the United States, but enough is in the MoMA in New York. Okay? And you can see the African influence clearly in the art. Okay? So um, a, a, lot of people, a lot of people have written about this book, uh, this, uh, this uh, painting. So this is a painting that is about welcoming and rejection. When you look at this painting, would, do you feel rejected or do you feel uh, welcomed by it? It's supposed to be a brothel, right? So, I mean, if it is a brothel, normally it's like, come on down, right? Come on in. Right? However, a lot of people, when they look at these faces, especially if you blow it up, uh, they feel kind of scared away, right? They, they want to feel rejected. What's your, what's your reaction to it? Rejected, but because I wanted to have that kind of duality in this painting, so it's welcoming and rejection. So again, it's how he felt himself, okay, being part of this new culture, this new society, this new country, but at the same time being rejected. And it was important for him to be rejected, okay. It's almost like a lot of people think that a foreigner is a, a victim, but for Picasso, this kind of victimization was important because it identified him, okay? It's in that kind of in-between, okay, that Picasso defined himself. Remember the hurricane. So he doesn't want to be fully accepted. He doesn't want to be fully rejected. He just want to be in this, what we call the liminal uh, space, okay, in-between the two. And so that's what we see around 1907. Okay, so you can see the African influence there. And then I want to move on to, um, Make a Jump, and these are two books that I've written. Um, one is about the period uh, 1924 uh, to 1936, um, which is also a very important period. This is the, the so-called surrealist period. Uh, this, uh, does anybody know about surrealism? Have you heard about surrealism? Surrealism in the, in the 1920s, late 1920s, and in the early 30s, is all about self-discovery. They were very much influenced by, by psychology, by Freud, right? about the subconscious and how uh, there is an, another self that you don't know about, right? So there's a self that you're aware of, that other people see, and there's a deeper self, okay? This fascinated Picasso, precisely because of this idea of having two personalities, this kind of split personality that of Picasso. So he, he got very much involved with surrealism. And um, so, for example, some of his best friends, like Adelaide Breton, for example, one of his best friends, and so on and so forth. And then the other book that I wrote um, is about the period 36 to 46, which is a fascinating period for another reason. That's the war period. So between 1936, that's the beginning of the Spanish Civil War, right? So Picasso was living in Paris, but all of his town lived in Spain. Can you imagine how that feels? I can't even imagine. So you're living in a foreign country, and now your native country is a, a, a war, not just war, civil war, right? So family members are killing each other, friends are killing each other. And then after that, 1940, Paris is invaded by Germany, right? And Picasso is living in Paris. So now he is a foreigner in a country invaded by another country. Okay, so you can see the different layers of foreigners, uh, of foreignness. Uh, for Picasso. So this was a, a very, very fascinating theory uh, in Picasso. I mean, you can see that a lot of the works are incredibly strong in that sense. So this is the 1920s. Now the 1920s began very happily, so there was a lot of, uh, there was, uh, everything was modern. 
So the buses and cars all of a sudden appear. There is economic growth, right? The happy 20s. Uh, there is pos positivism. Everything was going great, right? Uh, you can see that. There was so much innovation, you can imagine what it was like. The trains and the airplanes beginning to develop, and buses and cars, and big buildings, and the whole Paris is being uh, rebuilt. Now people are outside having fun at the cafes, you know? And then everything started to um, collapse. Right? So this is what we call the años locos. Okay? And they fall it. Okay? So um, crazy years. Right? Everybody's dancing. You can see women dancing together, you know, the kind of the openness. Uh, um, you, know, you can see the very fancy clothes. There was plenty of money. And then there was the, wall, the, the crash, right? Then the, the, the film was developing at this time. Jazz was uh, uh, coming out. You can see uh, black music, for example, was now being integrated. You can see the dances. The women's clothes were changing. Women were completely, were becoming more and more liberated. Um, they were now stuck at home, so they could, you know, join society as a whole. Again, okay, you can see women. Actually, a lot of the um, the clothes that they wore um, they were considered to be kind of very rebellious at the time. Okay, you can see the costumes. I love I love these kind. Of, don't you? I love it. I, I wish you know this fashion was coming back because I, I think it is so fancy. I think it is very elegant. But you can see how it is different from what they were doing before. It's called this, uh, uh, this style is uh, actually called Garzon, um, which is kind of a boy style, okay? Mm -hmm. So they're kind of boyish uh, style because they didn't have kind of the figure of the, the woman that you would have expected before. Then women could be on their own, so they could be in a cafe, just chatting, talking, drinking coffee, uh, away from men, they don't need men. Uh, until then, women needed men to go outside, okay? So you can see. And this is when Picasso uh, meets another uh, companion, which is Maria Therese. She was younger than, than he was, and so they started a relationship. So these were very intensive years for Picasso, okay, of the surrealist, uh, like I said. However, he does some of these works of the 1920s, and what does he do? So for this painting, he goes back to some of the Spanish masters. So this is Velázquez, a painting of Velázquez. So a lot of people have seen the very clear influence of Velázquez. So this painting of Velázquez, this is Velázquez painting a painting that you don't see. Okay, so these are the models. But he's painting, and he's looking at them in a mirror. That's the idea. So the mirror is over here. So he's looking at them in the mirror, and he's painting them on this canvas that we don't see. So Picasso interprets that in, oops, in this painting. Okay, again, we don't see the painting here but we see the reflection of the model, okay? And this is the artist that we actually get to see. So that's the, that's the influence. It's of course abstract, but the influence of Velázquez. And this is another painting that he did in 1932, and you can see again the influence of, of uh, Velázquez. So this is another painting by Velázquez. And you can see the woman looking at herself in the mirror, and here in Velázquez we have the same thing. So you see the woman, and you see her looking at herself. So that's kind of an interesting. And the whole idea of the mirror, uh, you see another self, okay? You see another dimension of yourself. So this is a very important uh, concept. And then, of course, in the 1930s, as he's doing this surrealist thing, he goes back to the bullfight. Again, Picasso going back to the, to the theme. So this is the Spanish bullfight. Has anybody been to a bullfight? It's kind of very bloody. Oh. Uh, I've been to one, one in my life, and it was one of the bloodiest things I've ever seen. Uh, okay, but you can see how Picasso relates to that. So what he does is that he takes the cape and he, he transforms that into blood flowing. Okay, so the cape of the bullfighter, uh, this is the bull, this is the, the horse. It was very typical at the time that the horse would be uh, gutted by the, uh, by the, so their insides would be coming out, right? Because they were bored by the, by the ball. However, he seems to be almost like being carried 
Bible. It's almost like at the end of some sort. He's now being killed. So this kind of uh, this is the playfulness because I was fascinated by the bullfight, by the topic of the bullfight. So he did he did that throughout his life, even towards the end of his life, he went to bullfight. Okay. And another interesting thing in the 1930s, as he's trying to discover himself, he starts to write poetry. Okay, a lot of people don't know this, but because in 1935 he started to write poetry, he started writing in Spanish, and then he moved on to French. So he wrote both in Spanish and French. That's another fascinating topic, the bilingualism of Paul Picasso, where in his case, he was almost trilingual because he spoke Spanish, his native language. Uh, he spoke French, even though with a heavy accent. And he also spoke Catalan because he lived uh, for a while in Barcelona and a lot of his friends were Catalan, so they spoke to him in Catalan. But he was mostly Spanish and he never wrote in Catalan. He wrote in Spanish and uh, English. And you can see that the, the um, poetry is very, very complex, okay? It's not easy to... Uh, so, it's like uh, you kind of run on. Uh, it's hard to understand, but it's fascinating. Uh, I've done some work on it. Uh, I've published some articles on his poetry, and it's really interesting to, to do that. And then, the 1930s, that's the topic of my other book, The Last Book that I mentioned, is the Spanish Civil War. It was a very brutal war, okay? Uh, half of the population died, okay, especially young males. Okay, so after the Civil War, uh, Spain was left without men. Right? So one of the things that they did when I grew up in Spain is that people wanted, uh, the government wanted people to have children because there was, there was nobody. Right? So they needed more people in the country. It's incredible. <clears throat> so Picasso uh, was very much influenced by this. So you can see here, this is Picasso was leaning towards the left of the world. Of course, unfortunately, the people that won the war were the right, the conservative, the fascist. Um, so that was another blow. So after the Civil War, Picasso couldn't go back to Spain. Even if, if he wanted to, he couldn't go back because Franco, the fascist, they wouldn't allow him to go back because they knew that his leanings uh, were towards the, the left. Okay? And this is... Uh, a very good image of the effect of the Civil War. A lot of cities were completely dis destroyed. This is Guernica. Have you heard of Guernica? So Guernica is in the north part of, of, of Spain. It's in the Basque country. So that's how you spell it in Basque. Guernica normally spell it with a G U uh, and then a C, right? But that's how you spell it in Basque. And this is Guernica. How it was left. Now the incredible thing, and this was unheard of at the time. It was bombed out of existence. I mean, it was just really destroyed. And there was no, there was no army there. There was just civilian population. Now we think that's a normal thing. Look at what the Russians are doing, right? We think that that's a normal thing. But at the time, this was unheard of. So it was the Germans collaborating with Franco that came and bombed this thing. So Picasso had a very strong reaction to this. And he painted the famous painting of the name Guernica, okay? which is this one. And that's a very famous painting. This painting is in Madrid. And it's one of the most important paintings of Picasso. So the De Mosel d'Avignon, that kind of brought all things that I was showing you in 1907, uh, it's probably his most important revolutionary work. This is the most recognized work of Picasso. Okay? It's not as revolutionary as that one. But you can see how Picasso integrated all kinds of things in here. So for example, he threw in elements of the corrida, the bull, and the horse, right? Um, and he also included things um, of some of the people that he was dating at the time. So for example, I, I skipped Dora Mar, uh, which was uh, his companion at the time. Again, somebody of presumably Jewish origin. Uh, um, and so uh, she was from Yugoslavian uh, background, and we presume that maybe Jewish. And this is Picasso. And you can see her in some of the images of, Ger of Guernica. So it's have it later. So you can see here, this is Picasso in 1938, and this is a portrait of her. So how you can see how they, he identified with her in the same idea. She's somebody that lived in, in, in Paris, but is from Yugoslavian background, a foreigner like him, a certain degree, and also Jewish background, probably, like a foreigner again like him. 
And so he identifies with the bull, okay? Which is also, if you think about an outsider in the corrida. And this is her. Oh, you can see that the faces are almost what they did. When you go to Carnica, you can see a lot of the faces of the women are Dora Marx. Okay? So a lot of these crying women that you see suffering women because of identify with, uh, with Dora Marx. Okay? So basically the whole idea behind this is how Picasso related to somebody who was rejected, that was an outsider, and so on and so forth. 